very much. Lately, Australian rock bands have been uh, at the forefront of the world music scene, and heading the charge, particularly America, is the Little River Band, who've racked up an impressive array of hit singles like It's a Long Way There, Lonesome Losers, Lady, Reminiscing. The band is about to embark on another tour of America. We thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to catch up with the Little River Band's lead singer and fast becoming one of this country's top television personalities as well. Glenn Shorrock, say hello. You got it. decided to take a vote. Good evening and welcome. Good evening and welcome. <laughs> Mike Walsh and myself and a few other people have decided that we want lead singers from bands right. to stay out of television. You feeling sick at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> Going on holiday for a while? <laughs> I'm in the other page. You you've, been filling in, you've been filling in very well though. You did, the Hello, you did Mike's show twice, right? Walsh? Uh, yeah, I did twice uh, while he was on holidays. I only did one before mm. when he was on holidays earlier this year. They gave you animal friends or something, didn't they? Yeah, it was a lot, lot easier. You know, an animals are always... Uh, a good saver of the show mm. and uh, we had uh, Willie the Cockatoo on who became great friends with me and I actually went to see them see them at the uh, Taronga Park Zoo as well. So you're performing Cockatoo is he? Uh, yes he is definitely he's a yeah. great great act he's 52 years old this Cockatoo. Really? Yeah, yeah. and they, they evidently lived till 100 well, some it, of them. And a vocabulary and all that? Uh... Yeah a good one yeah a colorful mm. one yeah. Colorful. Uh, very colorful yes. Yeah. I taught him a few things. <laughs> Uh, all the members of the Little River Band seem to be uh, going off into different directions. I mean, you're still together. I don't oh, want to definitely. start any rumors, but uh, everybody is doing something else. I know it's a couple of you produced Johnny Farnham's album. Graham Goble uh, produced uh, Johnny's album and wrote most of the material on it. Uh, yeah. And David Briggs has just produced uh, Australian Crawl and is present in the studio with Russell Morris. Mm -hmm. So everybody's very busy, and that's why... Uh, we don't uh, play much in Australia anymore because we're sort of uh, doing solo things. You do any writing or uh, any of that? Songwriting? Yeah? Yeah, I wrote uh, Help Is On Its Way. And well, I mean, for anybody else, I mean, do you do it? No, for not yet. No, I'd like someone to record a few things, but so yeah. far, no one has picked one up. Cool Change was one of mine as well. You've, uh, you've sort of been into the acting thing. Uh, I'm not going into the whys and wherefores or what you play and so forth. Do you enjoy that? Uh, it's something that I, you know, I, I'm, I'm the same as... Um, John Michael House, and I've been an avid fan of Sellers ever since I was nine years old. I grew up with The Goon Show, because mm. I grew up in England before I came to Australia, and that was very big in those days. Mm. And uh, even before rock and roll came along, I always wanted to be a, you know, a movie star. Like and, who? Uh, like who? Like who? Tell me. Well, Sellers would, would um, I'd yeah. love to play roles like he does. I mean, I think that's wonderful. You can, you can lose yourself in so many different characters and so many different mm. guises and disguises. You got into characters also with the Paul Hogan show here as well. You were yeah. able to do some of those. And yeah. Uh, yeah. You mentioned uh, England coming from there originally. Your dad, yeah. uh, I understand, uh, from Lancashire? My dad's getting a bit too famous, yes. Yes, he lives here now. <laughs> yeah, they, we, we grew up in Adelaide. I grew up in Adelaide. My mm. family uh, migrated to uh, Australia in 1955, I think it was, 54, 55, around that time. Yeah. We were originally intended for Melbourne, but they put us off the boat in Adelaide. <laughs> because there was too many people scheduled for Melbourne, and we grew up there. And my father has been, um, he's always been a, a singer around the home, in the bathroom, and an entertainer at parties and everything, you know. He, yeah. I think he instilled a lot in, uh, in me, and my mother was a great encouragement as well. Yeah. My mother uh, almost got into show business when she was very young, as a tap dancer and things like that. But your dad is singing now. They tell me he's a, he doesn't bill yes. himself as Glenn Shorrock's father, though. Oh, no, no, he disowns himself. <laughs> no, not yeah. really. He, he's, uh, he's uh, well, I forget how old he is now, about 63, around that, around that period. He's retired. Yeah. He used to work at General Motors Holders, of, Holders as a fitter and turner. But he's, uh, he's always sang, and um, now he's, doing, he's entertaining clubs that he belongs to, and mm. uh, pensioners and hospitals and things like that. Yeah. What, kind, little, of stuff, what kind of stuff is he singing? Well, he does things like Jerusalem and uh, oh, On the Road to Mandalay and <laughs> old musical comedy things. And does a lot of uh, monologues from the period of Stanley Holloway because mm. he's from Yorkshire. And Stanley Holloway is, is very famous uh, on Yorkshire monologues, mm. North England monologues. You know, like my, there's a famous seaside place called Blackpool that's noted for fresh air and fun. And Mr. and Mrs. Rumsbottom went there with young Albert there soon. 
a grand little lad with young Albert, all dressed in his suit quite as well, with a stick with an horse's head handle, the finest that Woolworths could sell. <laughs> it just goes on like that. It's yeah, a long one. Yeah, nice stuff. Oh, that's, that's good. Bad. That's really nice. <laughs> have, you, uh, have, you seen, have you seen him work, uh, Glenn? No, I haven't. Yeah, he, 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 he's only been to see me once, so I'm going to wait a, f a few years before I go see him. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. In in what 20 years of singing, in in rock and roll, he's been to see me once, and that was at the Adelaide Symphony concert concert that we did in Adelaide. Why why is why has he stayed away? Well, he's just not into rock and roll, you know. It's just not his bag. Does it's he? too loud for him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have, there's an interesting story. After the Adelaide Symphony concerts that we recorded for an album, uh, we did three shows and he came to see the last one. And I came down in the morning, Sunday morning. You know, I'd been up till about uh, four o'clock, I don't know. I was pretty bleary-eyed and uh, there he was at the, at the breakfast table reading the, the Sunday papers. Morning, Dad. Morning. I said, uh, how did you enjoy last night then? He said, oh. They were great, they were lovely. I really enjoyed seeing you up there, you know, terrific. He says, too loud, he says, you don't have to have it that loud, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, you know, what else did you think about? Well, he said, it was great, you know, the symphony orchestra and everything, they were lovely. And, but there was one thing that was puzzling me, he said, there were, you've got these great big packing cases either side at stage, you know, great big black things towering above. I said, what are those packing cases for? To put your drums in. <laughs> He's talking about the PA system, you know. The speakers, yeah, right, all stacked up. Oh, he doesn't really relate to it, but uh, no, he's a, he's, a, he's a lovely man. Yeah. Of course, hey, he's my dad. How long have you been married now? What's the time? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was sure myself. How long have you been married? Uh, May the 4th, got married. Yeah? Mm. Mm. Has it changed your life? Then? Not a lot, no, not really. We were living together for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that either. No, of course not. No, no. Yeah, that's fine. What is her name? Jo. Jo, yeah. Is she uh, musically inclined? Or? Yes, yeah, of course. She's, uh, she's well into uh, everything that's going on. Yeah. She, um, she started life in, um, in art school in Paran and went on to... She worked for Fred Skepsy for a while as a, as a PA production assistant for him. Producer, film producer Fred Skepsy. Yes, yeah. and then went into advertising and mm. then met me. Yes. And I took over, I guess. <laughs> or precedence or something. Yeah. Did, did, uh, do you think it's necessary that, uh, that you found a woman that was at least in touch with the business or understood the business as opposed to somebody who wasn't at all? Yeah, I think so, yes. Um, she's a great support to me. Mm -hmm. um, she, I mean, I'd, I'd obviously been working a long time before I met her. Mm -hmm. So she was used to what I was doing, and used to the lifestyle. She'd been mixed up with films and advertising. Which is a pretty crazy business, anyway. So, yeah. you know, the transition to rock and roll wasn't that uh, too much of a traumatic experience. But we we enjoy a fairly quiet life. You're going away on the road now. Um, the, yeah, the band is. Yes, we're away on the 27th uh, until the 5th of November. Where do you go? Back to America. We start in Dallas and just do some college gigs around the East Coast and Florida and around there. I haven't really seen the itinerary. They just mm. put me on a plane and. Does it, ever, does it ever boggle your mind or astound you that uh, you go to a place like the United States from here and that uh, they all know who you are and they all know what you're about? And, uh... Well, sometimes if you think about it, yeah, it's, it's a lifelong dream come true. But nothing has really happened in my career that's been sudden change. It's always been quite gradual and, mm. and it's been backwards and forwards as well. There's no leaping to stardom. So the wrench hasn't been, uh, okay. you know, it's been quite comfortable. I think... Uh, we're all fairly, fairly comfortable with what we've got, and we want to hang on to it and, and push it even further. And obviously you're trying to do things for the music world back here as well, I think, with everybody going out and diversifying. Well, I mean, Little River Band will continue for as long as, long as we want it to continue for, mm. and as long as the people keep buying the records and, and want us to play. But uh, that won't go on forever and ever, so we have to look at other things as well. We're, all, you know, we're not 20-year-old anymore. You'll never have nothing to worry about. Have a lovely well, trip. Thank you very much. And Tom. all the best for everybody here, OK? Glenn Shaw, Glenn and River Band, when we come back, John Wallace and Matilda to sing Clancy and the Overflow, a big hit now. Hang in there.